All right, gentlemen, Terrence Pop here with another episode from the lair. Uh, this is actually a response piece to an, uh, an article, and I want to thank whoever f uh, forwarded this to me. I think I received it four or five different times. You guys are on the ball, and you are absolutely correct in sending me this. And this is basically came out in one of the UK uh, publications. Uh, it's basically told, uh, sh it's called shortage of eligible men has left women taking desperate steps to preserve their fertility, experts say. All right, so this is basically it. I'm going to try to upload this and have it in the link's description, uh, the PDF with actually my notes on it because I read through this and I, uh, I was at work when I did and I had to stop because I was laughing my fucking balls off. Um, I've covered a lot of this already in many, many of my videos. Uh, you know, like the fun with numbers, I think it's one and two, rules of the game. And then I, I hit on that one uh, with that woman. She was in her 40s, early 40s, had twins, and how much money it wound up costing her and in her insurance company to have those kids. And, um, yeah, I just want to, you know, I just, I just couldn't. I just had to, you know, weigh on this, uh, and it's not worth doing a full episode on because it's it's basically three pages, and um, but goddamn, I mean, this is this is typical shit right here. Uh, somebody sent me a uh, a link to um, something that's going on in Tennessee here in the United States. How they set aside a bunch of taxpayer money to uh, study the effect on porn and marriage. Uh, and again, you know, this is uh, classic feminism attacking symptoms, uh, not pointing the fingers at themselves and saying this could be the cause. Experts said terrifying demographic shifts have created a deficit of educated men and, growing, and a growing problem of leftover, quote-unquote, professional women, with female graduates vastly outnumbering males in many countries, to include America. Uh, and they're talking about England, but you know, basically the statistics, what's going on over there, and what's going on over, over here, are pretty close, and they're slightly higher higher in Canada in regards to certain uh, subjects. When I read this article, you know, the a subject hit my mind, which is basically um, uh, what happens when a, when the women run out of places to Monkey Branch too, uh, and. Basically, you know, these women who um, are basically hit the wall, uh, they're in their third fertility window, and it's all over. Uh, they're basically spending a lot of money uh, freezing eggs and what have you. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, when you freeze your eggs. If the sandwich bag you grow them in is fucked up, it's a dead stick. That's all I can say. Better find a younger woman who's on her game to grow your fucking cunt bags for you. Because uh, it's all over for you. And here's another stat I want to run by because I find this this is really daunting here. Research, researchers found that more than 90% of cases, the women were attempting to buy extra time because they could not find a partner to settle down with amid the darth of educational of educated men. First of all, I don't have a care. I don't give two shits. Of these women want to say, you know, freeze their goddamn heads for all that matter. You know, as long as the taxpayer ain't paying for it, go right ahead. Like I said before, they can be the best eggs in the universe, but if the sandwich bag's fucked up, you're done. More shaming language, you know, basically they're saying experts said the research busts the myth that selfish career women were choosing uh, their careers over fertility and were putting their, their so-called future children on ice. All right. All right, so these women that are, you know, these educated women that have these great careers, they're basically stating that, you know, there are no men. Well, I've actually had this before with a couple of other single women who were in their late 30s and they didn't like the truth I told them then and they're probably not gonna like the truth now. And I simply said this, I said, so you went to high school, right? You had to, because you graduated college and got a graduate degree, right? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, did you have a boyfriend in high school? And they're like, well, of course, you know, we had a, we're not gay. We had, a, we had a boyfriend in high school. 
I'm like, okay. Did he use the word love with you at any time? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, let's move on. You know, what happened with that? And they're like, well, you know, I had to break up with him because I wanted to go to college. <clears throat> okay. So you went to college. Did you date in college? In Latin? You know, they were like, yeah, we dated some in college. And did you have a boyfriend? And was it steady, serious? Did he use the L word on you? Yeah, it was pretty serious, but you know, I want to go to graduate school. Okay. So they went to graduate school because everyone told them, you know, you, you become a lawyer, a physician assistant, doctor, whatever the hell you want to do, you will be happy. Well, they weren't happy. And they were bitching at me all the time. And now, this was back in the day when I was in my 20s. And uh, I was just coming off of a fight and I was busted up real bad. Uh, and, you know, bruised ribs, forearm, forearms were bruised to the bone, blocking kicks, cut over the eye. And I just, I just wasn't feeling it. So I, I said, listen, listen, ladies, you come in here and you complain all the time about these men that, you know, you don't have. Well, from what you told me, you had a man in high school who said he loved you, and you passed him up. And you had one or two men in college who said they loved you, and you passed them up. Because you thought when you got to the end of the rainbow, when you got all this money, that there'd be all these men waiting around for you, and you would, like, smother yourself in happiness. Well, I'm here to tell you the bitter truth. You know, you only got so many bites at the apple, and you passed all yours up. It's over. All the low-hanging fruit is gone. And hell, you're too fat to climb the tree to get the good apples. So you have to deal with the apples that are on the ground. And some of them may or may not have been bit or have worms in them. Sorry, you did it to yourself. Well, both these women, like, cried, ran out. And the guy who owned the place was like, thanks a lot, Pop. One of them returned and never saw the other one again. Obviously, the truth hurts. Fuck them. I don't care. All right. Now, I'm going through here more in this article some more. And here's some more uh, crazy-ass shit here. And this is from England, but it's very close. Uh, they're trying to downplay this, I think, to a certain degree. Because they use stats from 85, which says 40, 45% of the UK students in college were female. And then they go to 2000, they say 54% of them were female. So now we're over half in 2000. Well, that's almost two fucking decades ago, isn't it? We are now at the top of the tsunami, and it's going to come crashing down here. Okay, and they, they mention it right or indirectly, the, munching, the monkey branching. Uh, this is how th this group, now in their 30s, is finding it harder to find a man with equal status, fertility experts said. So equal status, what is that telling me? They're monkey branching. They want something equal to them or better. That's how it works. But they're doing that when they're in the wall, and they don't have anything to swap for that because dudes, by nature... We, we go for younger, more fertile women. And you could shame us, you could say whatever the fuck you want, but that's the case. And it, it is the case that women bunky branch because that's just their nature. So you know, trying to get somebody to go against their nature, I think I've mentioned this before, that the scorpion will always sting the frog. Okay, so basically uh, the research pres uh, presented at the European Society of Human Reproduction an embryology conference in Geneva, like they need to have that in Geneva, was based upon interviews with women from the United States, England, and Israel. Let's see. But the, the lead author said similar trends were likely in the UK. No, they are likely. You know, they are, and it's not likely, they are. Because this is going on all over the Western world to a certain degree. Where women are 35% more likely than men to go to the university. All right. And why is that? Because the system we have now is favoring women, punishing boys for being boys, medicating them, tell them it's toxic masculinity, and, uh, you know, the culture's turned against fucking men. And in my opinion, if you have a culture that is weaponizing and vil you know, one sex and turning the other sex into the villain, in my opinion, that culture and that, and, and that society doesn't deserve to exist because a house divided will never stand. It's written in the Bible, it is what it is. Marcia Inhorn, professor of anthropology at Yale University, 
said professional women found themselves losing out in the game of quote-unquote musical chairs because there's simply too few men to go around of their same caliber. So there's basically too few men for them to monkey branch to. And they won't go down because it's their nature. Now, I'm going to give a word of warning to you men out there. Women always do this. They always look for the better deal, either equal or better, okay? So if you're with a woman and she makes as much money as you or more, be prepared to be replaced. Or at best, they'll take you on, they'll marry you, or they'll have the kids that you know they want, and then they're gonna jettison you like yesterday's fucking garbage. Why? Because they can say three simple words, I'm not happy, pay me till my ki the kids are 18 or tw to 26, depending upon the state you're in. So yeah, don't even fall for this bullshit. Men, I'm telling you right now, if you have a woman that makes as much money as you or close to what you're making or more, you are fucking expendable and disposable. Accept it now. Okay, she goes on to say, there is a major gap. There are literally missing men. There's not enough college graduated men to go around. In simple terms, there's an oversupply of educated women. Well, no shit. I think men have brought this up. The MRAs have brought this up. I think it was like 30 years now, you know, in regards to that. And then 50 years for the fucking fucked up shit in court where you don't get to see your fucking kids. Or you get turned from a parent into a visitor, but called a parent by name only. Because four hours a month a father does not make. That's a whole other issue. Oh, uh, let's see. China calls them leftover women. Listen, I don't give a fuck about China, okay? I don't give a fuck about them. I don't even give a fuck about Europe. I only give a fuck about America. America's great. Let's see, uh, the former president of the Society of Medical Anthropology said the women interviewed in the study were highly successful with 81% having college degrees. Great! And they'll fall out of the goddamn gene pool and we won't have to worry about them in the future. And they did it to themselves. You gotta love the picture here. There's the, fuck. the egg with the artificial insemination. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. See, the, arthro the anthropologist suggested some women might need to be prepared to compromise some of their standards in order to find love. What she's trying to tell you here is they will lower their standards to have children with you, and then they will cut you the fuck away because they want something equal or better than them. Period. But she also suggested that society uh, should act to increase the number of men going into higher education. My response is the ship has already sailed. How do you unfuck that imbalance? You can't. All right, first of all, there is no benefit to get married, period. Maybe I'll live longer to be a slave. All right, uh, men are portrayed as the villains. Uh, they basically, the feminists are saying all men are potential rapists. Uh, they bitch about pay, even though you know, the, the, the women bitch about pay even though men make up, what, 93% of all workforce fucking deaths. Okay, I mean, fuck, dude. There is no benefit. You get married, you're on the hook for child support for 18 to 26 years, depending upon the state you live in, and you may or may not have to pay the bitch alimony for the rest of your fucking life. So what is the upside on this? The house is rigged, the culture hates you, makes you look like an idiot, what it, or there is no benefit other than to work and live for yourself. Don't even buy into the fucking program because when enough people walk away from the system and say, fuck it, I'm not going to fucking support it with my tax dollars, I'm not going to support it with my money, and I'm certainly not going to support it with my children. So and, and what will happen then? It'll be a bloodbath, which they so richly fucking deserve. It may be. <laughs> here we go. I love this. Oh, like it's a suggestion. It might be about rethinking the way we approach this, she said. Uh, fuck you. Again, we're bringing up there. Most women who are educated would like to have an educated partner. Traditionally, women have always wanted to, quote unquote, marry up. Or, or go to someone uh, more successful or financially way, uh, well off. What she's basically saying there is bitches like to monkey branch and it's in their nature. And it's, it's, it's biting them in the ass. 
they're trying to word it differently, but they're basically saying have kids with men that you, you that are not equal to you in uh, status or pay, and then get rid of them. Some women are paying a high price for feminism, she suggested. Well, most women are paying a high price for feminism, and that's not a suggestion. Oh my God, this is just pissing me off. I see. As a feminist. I think it's great that women are doing so well, but I think there has been a cost that has been paid, she said, uh, warning that many had <laughs> many had been left in sadness and isolation. Crazy cat lady starter kit, can you get one? You're gonna love this here. In some cases, women taking part in the in the in-depth interview said they would be happy to be in a relationship with someone less educated but felt that they were intimidating to the men who were available because men know the game they know they're expendable and disposable and they're not gonna fucking play you know sorry they're taking their their toys and they're fucking leaving the playground and you can fuck off better learn how to team up with somebody your own sex or you know, play solitaire and pet your cats. Okay, this is this could be mean, but this needs to be said because it's true. Okay, researchers said that until now, many commenters on egg freezing said that it was driven by a desire to preserve fertility while raising up the career ladder. Uh, I, good, I, I'm glad they're doing this. You want to know why? Because I welcome them having the long, very unfulfilling, punishing, cruel sliver of hope that will never be. <laughs> That's just mean, but fuck it, I don't care. They're trying to assume, or they're trying to state to you that women are putting their fertility on hold. No, they're, no, they're not putting on hold. When it's over, it's over. You can spend an ass load of money at a very small chance of uh, success and a very large chance of birth defects, injury, and death to you or the children. And that's pretty fucking selfish. You know, this woman, uh, is it Gita Nargrown from the UK, and she basically, when it comes to starting a family, it seems there is now a social problem with these women finding men at the same level of education. Again, this is another doctor mentioning monkey branching, which is gonna be their downfall. Cause they're jumping these fucking, they're jumping these fucking, uh, you know, branches and they get to the top and there's nowhere left to go. It's over. They got to go down and, and, and get with something le lesser than them. And you men don't fall for that cause you're fucking disposable and you're expendable and you'll wind up paying, paying out your ass and then having a life of nothing but misery and fucking heartache. And at best you'll be like me and watch your kids grow up and fa grow up and fast forward. Okay, uh, here we go, the, the, the shaming language. Professor Adam Balin, president of British Fertility Society said, we are seeing some big socialist, social issues, in particular in some social economic groups, with young men not committing. Shaming language. How about young men discovering it's a fucking fucked up rigged game and they're not playing it anymore? How about that? How about men are capable of logic and reason? And they're like, yeah, this is fucked up. Stick your head in the guillotine, I dare you. Here we go, one in five women in the UK is now childless by the end of their fertile life, compared to one in 10 just a generation ago. There you go. Hopefully we can get that to one in two or one in one and we'll just fucking end this shit. All right, they're going on with numbers in the education, blah, blah, blah. Basically now, you know, it's two thirds women graduating from uh, college and one third men. And that seems like it's going down even further. I can see it in the very near future in the, in the five to eight years being 75, 25. And that's gonna be an absolute travesty. I just can't wait to watch that shit fucking unfold. The gender gap for higher education is now as large as that between rich and poor people, which was described as a worrying inequality by former UCAS Chief Executive Mary Kernock 
hyphen cook. Okay, well, when that gap gets real bad, that means people are gonna get so pissed off that they're probably gonna take to the streets and take up arms and it'll be a bloodbath, which, in my opinion, probably needs to happen. The, the inequality and the straight up corruption and the destruction of one of, of half the population in the eyes of the culture that deserves nothing less, in my opinion. Oh, let's see, British fertility experts have said the Gulf is terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah, you think it's terrifying now? Just you fucking wait. Okay, again, more of this fucking shaming language, telling men that they don't want to settle down and it's their fucking fault. Again, it's not men's fault. The system is fucking broken. Holy shit, I can't believe they can't see this. So basically these women are freezing their eggs so maybe they'll feel better. To give themselves a spark of hope that they'll have children down the road. But after 38, getting that shit to stick, the sandwich bag is all fucked up, pretty fucking hard. Here we go. Typically it costs 10,000 to freeze eggs and keep them in storage for 10 years in the UK. That's pounds, so it's probably $1,500K, $15,000 in America, so 10,000 pounds, 15,000 American. You know, I don't know what the exact exchange rate, but that's what it was a few years ago and I haven't been keeping up on it. And my opinion, my answer to this is this. <laughs> Let the bitches pay for the agony of extended hope. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do to us dudes. They take away our hope and they take away our kids. Oh, you better keep working. Oh, you can't live in a house? Live in your car. Uh, how do I know this? Because it fucking happened to me. Cry me a fucking river. Get over it, redonkulous.fucking.com. All right, so they're basically trying to say that women just aren't really aware of their biological clock. Well, yes and no. They pretty much know this when they get out of high school because they tell you it straight up in sexual education. But then they're... Uh, basically brainwashed by these feminists or the feminazis out there, the feminist culture, that you can put it off until you're 40, it'll be okay. No, no it won't. You're being lied to by feminism and you women out there should get pissed the fuck off. Okay, here we go. Almost all the women in the study who employed eggs freezing were heterosexual and wanted to become married mothers. Good luck with that, you monkey branching hoovers. Research found women lamenting the missing men in their lives viewing egg freezing as a way to buy time while in the continued online search for a committed partner. Okay, right. Uh-huh. Let's see. You're, they accuse you of rape and you're guilty until you're guilty. Uh, yes means yes. Um... You get fucked in court, you lose your kids, you pay child support, you lose half your shit, and you may not have to pay alimony for the rest of your life. And you're wondering why men don't want to play the game. And I can't blame them. Now listen, both men and women, we have eons, millions of years of instinct driving us to do this. In the past, men have marched into gunfire fought to the death, been maimed, killed, tortured, risked everything so they could get with a woman, be married, and, you know, have their shot at, you know, having kids and passing on their, their, their lineage. And with that being said, how fucking bad does the system have to be where men are turning their nose and back on millions of years of evolution, eons of instinct, and so forth, it's, that's, that's really fucking bad on the behalf of women and feminism. Holy fucking shit. Just think about that for a moment. Wow. Just fucking wow. Okay, basically goes on to say that this, this egg freezing, quote unquote, isn't a postponing, it's more of a, uh, a mark of desperation in preserving their fertility beyond their natural, beyond the natural end of the reproductive years. Okay, like I said before, they can have the best eggs in the world, but if the sandwich bag is fucked, it's not gonna fucking happen. All right, well that's me covering this fuck. It's oh, it's from the Telegraph from the UK. You know, 
I just read this and, and it just it just stunk of blaming, shaming, and a bunch of fucking excuses for uh, the injustice that feminism has wrought upon, uh, upon both the male species, the male portion of the species, and the female portion of the species. So congratulations, feminism. I hope to God you keep fucking doing stupid shit like this so the world will wake up to your stupidity. Anyway, that's Terrence Pop. I gotta try to get some sleep. Talk to you later out. Oh.